All right, uh, hello. Um, this is a very quick uh, ANOVA demonstration. Again, this is to give you some more experience with the factorial design. In this case, uh, we've got uh, two independent variables, uh, like likability and nervousness, and a dependent variable that we'll call perceived innocence, okay? And so the idea is here that uh, participants have been placed into an experiment where they've watched uh, videos of a um, person behaving as a defendant um, in a courtroom-like situation. And they are portrayed in a way that is either likable or not likable. And so participants are randomly assigned that way. And they're also... Um, Sometimes the uh, stimulus person is either behaving nervously or not nervously. Okay, so there's some random assignment there. So there's essentially four different possible combinations of likability and nervousness into which people are being randomly, participants are being randomly assigned. Likable nervous, likable not nervous, not likable nervous, not likable not nervous. If you uh, look at the um, data themselves, it looks like uh, there's a lot of variability um, when you look at either one of the uh, um, independent variables uh, on the uh, dependent variable. Um, uh, the big question will become whether or not this actually ends up being statistically significant. So let's find out if indeed this is something that is statistically significant. Um, and in this case, uh, just looking at the data, um, my guess is that the experimenters will have uh, intended to uh, predict that the um, interaction would be statistically significant, but maybe not uh, any of the other variables, um, any of the other factors. Okay, so let's see if that indeed happens. And what we could do is we go to ANOVA, okay, <clears throat> and then we just sort of do some things that we might want to go ahead and just do, okay. So we'll go ahead and put in our homogeneity assumption check. Um, we'll go ahead and um, get our estimated marginal means. Okay, and we're going to want those to be both uh, means plots and means tables. And so we'll go ahead and sort that out. And let's go ahead and put in, let's just go ahead and get effect size 2. Put in the dependent variable and then put in our fixed factors. Okay and you'll start to see uh, everything beginning to populate. For marginal means, we'll go ahead and put both terms, both of these into term one, and then we can take a look at uh, what we get. Okay, and so you'll notice a few things already that are kind of uh, uh, things you will not normally see with an analysis variance of this sort. Um, you're not going to find anything quite this clean. Okay, uh, when we partition the sums of squares, you know, they're going to be partitioned um, into, you know, there's a total sums of squares, but it gets partitioned into uh, the residuals, which is your error term, um, your two factors, uh, nervousness and likability, and then the interaction terms. So they're all being partitioned. Degrees of freedom also are being partitioned. Um, there's 12 total participants. Um, all the uh, remaining degrees of freedom should add up to eight. Or, I mean, not eight, but to 11. Okay, so nervousness. Uh, there's two um, conditions, levels within nervousness. So one degree of freedom. Likeability, same thing. Um, since this ends up being multiplicative, uh, we have really 
one de degree of freedom for our interaction term as well. Okay, and sure enough, the interaction term um, ends up being statistically significant. When you uh, divide uh, the mean square term by the uh, mean square residual here, um, you're going to get a pretty large F ratio, one that you would never see in real research. Um, a p-value um, that'll be just simply um, left at less than 0 0.001. And uh, if you were in SPSS, it would just simply go 0 0.000, which we all know is not quite true. Um, and you can see the eta square is actually really huge for this. Okay. I went ahead um, and uh, uh, made sure that the homogeneity of variances uh, assumption was not um, um, in any way, shape, or form violated. We don't have any worries there. Uh, that p-value is greater than 0.05, so all's good in our world. And you are truly looking at a crossover interaction, and it's noticed by its sort of butterfly-type uh, pattern. And this is a very clean crossover interaction where neither of the two independent variables or factors by themselves is statistically significant, but the interaction truly is. And when you look at the estimated, um, when you look at what they call the estimated marginal means, these are really cell means, um, uh, you can see that in the combination of likability and nervousness, um, people tend to perceive uh, the defendant as relatively innocent. Um, same thing with not likable and not nervous. But uh, for likable and not nervous, or not likable and nervous, um, they're not seen as quite so innocent. Okay, so that's something to make note of when you're trying to characterize this. You know, what, how would you describe this to a person who maybe is a lay person and really hasn't had any stats courses, um, you'd say that it looks like um, um, by themselves, likability and nervousness don't seem to have any real impact on perceived innocence. But people who are um, both likable and nervous tend to be given the benefit of the doubt. People who are not likable and not nervous tend to be given the benefit of the doubt. Um, People who are likable and not nervous or not likable and nervous, on the other hand, don't get the benefit of the doubt in terms of their uh, perceived innocence, which would have some implications for how they might uh, be treated or um, in the courtroom and how uh, they may be uh, sentenced, uh, how they might, you know, what kind of verdicts might be issued, what kind of sentencing they might get. So... Anyways, when you're thinking about how to describe this, you know, try to think about it in sort of real person's terms, you know, how a real person would um, understand the data. And I'll give you a lot of latitude for how you do that. Um, try not to go into stat speak or professor speak, whatever you do. And you should be able to handle this assignment with aplomb. Don't forget, you want to save, and um, you'll want to then upload it to the assignment link. And once you've done that, uh, you will be in great shape. So that is essentially what I wanted us to do today. Uh, and uh, get this turned in as soon as you can, and uh, we will have a, another demo for you very, very soon. All right. Take care.